Hello, this is Mr. Kenyon Nola, and today I'm going to teach you about similar shapes. So similar shapes are just dilated shapes. In a previous video, I taught you guys about dilations, are just dilated shapes. So let's look at the example from the previous video. So a dilation is just is just enlarging or shrinking a shape. So in this case, we enlarged every side by two. Uh, so it's a dilation. Okay, so similar shapes are just dilated shapes that may, M-A-Y, may, that may have been rotated reflected or translated okay and I'll show you guys an example of that so here this is just a pure dilation we didn't rotate the new dilation we didn't uh, translate it or reflect it but you'll get some examples of shapes that have been dilated and rotated reflected or translated also, similar shapes are also, um, that's part one of similar shapes, and uh, they're the pairs of corresponding, corresponding sides are proportional. They're proportional. Okay, so the pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. What does that even mean? That just means that every side is dilated by the same scale factor. So this side has been dilated by two so right here, uh, this side is twice as long as this side, this side is twice as long as this side, and this side is twice as long as this side. Every pair is twice as long, or depending on the scale factor they give you, is half, is three-fourths, is five times. So just make sure that every side has the same uh, dilated scale factor, okay? So take your highlighter um, and highlight this part. Highlight this whole thing, okay? The pairs of corresponding sides are proportional and just highlight this part they're just dilated shapes okay they still look the same but one may be bigger than the other or smaller than the other um, so let's figure out if some shapes some examples really are similar so let's look at this one determine if the polygons are similar so it looks like they took this one and they dilated it to shrink it down and they also rotated it and moved it over or they translated it over so there's an example so dilation they shrunk rotate and translate it over to get over here but are these really similar so we're going to compare every pair of corresponding sides so i'm going to take the 16 and I'm going to write it over here and we're going to see if they really are proportional. A uh, proportion just determines whether all of the ratios are equal and a ratio is just a fraction. So let's see if all these ratios are equal with the corresponding sides. That's a lot of words, I know, but once I show you it's not going to be that complicated. So here's 16. It's the longer side of the two. Um, so we're going to take the 16 and we're going to compare it with the longer side of these two. Okay between the base and the height or the length and the width. So that's eight. The eight is the long is longer of the two. So we're gonna write 16 over eight. We're gonna write 10. This is the shorter of the two over the shorter of these two over five. Okay, and we're gonna compare this 16 over eight. We wanna compare every single side, every single pair of corresponding sides. So 16 over eight, 10 over five, 16 over eight, 10 over five. And let's simplify this. 16 over 8, can we simplify that? Yeah, we could divide 8 into both 16 and 8. So this would be a 2 over 1. 
This would be 2 over 1 because 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 2 over 1, 2 over 1. And all of these ratios are equal. So all the sides are proportional. So we can say yes, similar. And if you don't want to write the word similar, if that's just too many letters for you, you can just say yes, squiggly, or enye, or whatever. But this, or tilde, is the symbol for similar, okay? Um, now, you could, you're could you asking, what if I wanted to go the other way? What if I wanted to write, instead of going from 16 to 8, what if I wrote 8 over 16, 5 over 10, 8 over 16, and 5 over 10? Because we want to compare every pair of corresponding sides. Does that still work? Well, let's compare it. 8 over 16 would be 1 half. 5 over 10 would be 1 half. 1 half, 1 half. And all those ratios are still equal, and every side, all the sides are proportional. So, yeah, doesn't matter if you want to go from the large to the small or the small to the large, they're still proportional. All those ratios simplified would still be equal to each other. All right, let's give you another example. Determine if these polygons are similar and these look like parallelograms because the opposite sides are parallel. They do have sides that are the same, but are those corresponding sides? Well, let's look. 30 is the longer of the two, but this 30 is the shorter of the two. So we're gonna compare this 30 with the 36 because the long with the long. So let's write 30 over 36. The 20 is the shorter of these two, so we're going to write 20. And what's the shorter of these two lengths? 30. So let's write 20 over 30. And we want to compare all four sides, so I know. You're like, why? Well, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, but let's just let's just write them over, okay? Because just to do for due diligence, okay, that we've compared all four pairs. Now let's let's reduce this. Let's simplify this. 30 over 36. What can you divide in both 30 and 36? Yeah, 6. Okay, 30 divided by 6 is 5. 36 divided by 6 is 6. 20 over 30. What can we divide in both 20 and 30? 10. 20 divided by 10 is 2. 30 divided by 10 is 3. 5 over 6. 2 over 3. Yeah, these two are proportional, but are all four pairs proportional? No. So, this would be no. Not similar that's it they're not all all four of them are not equal so okay next example okay so these look like trapezoids these are parallel these are parallel um and so let's compare um yeah okay so uh this looks like if we compare from the small one, okay, it might be a little easier. Uh, if we compare this one to this one, it looks like they rotated it this way. So this eight, we're going to compare with the 12. And we're gonna make a ratio because, and look at, there's the two, two arcs right there, two arcs right there, eight and 12. Okay, and then uh, let's compare this 11.8 with a 17.7, .7, so it looks like they rotated it just 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise. Uh, let's compare this uh, 16 with a 24. Okay, this 16 is the longer base out of the two bases. Uh, this 24 is the longer base out of the two bases. And then let's compare again uh, the 11.8 and the 17.7. .7. Also, yeah, if you went from 12, if you wrote 12 over 8, 17 over 8, and so if your numerator and denominator are flipped, make sure all of them, all pairs are flipped, okay? And so, okay, 8 over 12. So this, okay, I see fractions here, so I'm going to immediately grab my calculator. Um, and let's, let's, let's get a fraction and see if all those fractions are equal. So 8 divided by 12 is 0 0.6 with a bar okay and then let's do this 11.8 divided by 17.7 uh, 
is 0 0.6 with the bar. Let's see, 16 divided by 24 is 0 0.6 with the bar. And we already determined 11.8 over 17.7 is also 0 0.6 with the bar. So all four of these ratios are equal to each other. Uh, they all simplify to 0 0.6 or 2 thirds. Um, so yes, similar because they are all proportional. Um, all right, look at that. So if you did 12 over 8, make sure you did 17.7 over 11.8, 24 over 6, and they still would be all proportional. Okay. All right, so that's how you determine whether uh, two shapes are similar. Now, let's look at this next example. This one's a little different. This time, we know it says, yes, they already are similar. What does similar mean? That means that all the sides are proportional. And we're trying to find this missing side length right here. Let's find it. So we know that every side is proportional, every pair. Uh, so that going back to our original example, that means that for this one, this side is twice as long as this side. This side is twice as long as this side. This side is twice as long as this side. So let's let's figure out what's what's the scale factor for this one. What's the zoom factor if we already know that they're similar? Well, let's compare two sides. This side is five. Its corresponding side is ten. So it looks like that this side is half the length of this side, or this side is or this side is twice as long as this side. And if they are similar, that means every side would follow that. So this side would be half the length of this side. So a question mark would just be three. Heh, that was pretty easy, huh? Because they're similar, we know this tells us, this five tells us that all four sides are half the length of all four sides here. So three is half of six, so. There you go. Let's do something a little more challenging than that. Okay, what if it's not half? What if, what if, yeah, they're, they're similar? Find the missing side length. It looks like they took this parallelogram and reflected it and then dilated it, made it smaller. Okay, so we're going to have to create, let's create a proportion. So uh, let's, let's compare the corresponding side. So let's take 30 over 5. I'm going to 30 over 5 because these are the corresponding sides. Okay. And then let's compare the 42 with the question mark. Okay. Because if it's a parallelogram, then this would also be question mark. This would also be 42. This would also be 30. So let's compare. Okay. So let's write 42 over question mark. Okay. And then they are equal because this time they told us that they're similar. So the ratios are all proportional. So let's figure this out. Okay, let's simplify this 30 over 5. What divides in both 30 and 5? Five? 5. 30 divided by 5 would be 6. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Is equal to 42 over question mark. We have a proportion. And how do you solve proportions? Cross multiply. So 6 times question mark so multiply those two is equal to 1 times 42 which is just 42 and divide both sides by 6 42 divided by 6 is 7 so question mark is equal to 7 units doesn't tell us so let's just write units so there we go and if you notice so 30 is six times as long as five. So 42 is six times as long as seven. So that follows that they're similar, that every side has been dilated by the same scale factor. Six times as long, six times as long, okay? And our second to the last, or this, uh, yeah, second to the last example, Polygons are similar, so they're proportional. Find the missing side length. All right, this one is a little tricky because it looks like they they rotated it, okay? 
Uh, so let's figure this out. Hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a pair of scissors because I want to make sure that I know which sides really are the corresponding sides. So we're going to take this and it was originally like this and I'm going to rotate it till they they look like they're in the same orientation. So is it quite that? Oh, well, let's put it here. So is it quite that? No. Uh, there we go. So now there seems like they're in the same orientation that that angle is about the same angle. Okay, so now let's compare the sides that we do have. Okay, so we're gonna ignore this 35 because there's nothing there. So we're gonna write 40 over 24 is equal to 30 over question mark. Okay, you could have written it as 24 over 40 is equal to question mark over 30. Just make sure you're consistent. Okay, so this time we wrote the sides from the big triangle to the small triangle, big triangle to small triangle. Now let's solve this proportion. Okay, let's simplify it. 20, 40 over 24. What can we divide in both 40 and 24? I think 8. I think 8. I know 8. 4 divided by 8 is 5. 24 divided by 8 is 3 is equal to 30 over question mark. And let's move this so we're not distracted. Okay, and then let's cross multiply there and there. We would have 5 times question mark is equal to 30 times 3, which is 90. And then divide both sides by 5. Question mark is equal to 1 and Eight is that correct? Ninety divided by five. Eighteen. Did I do that in my head correctly? That's right. Why did I? Why did I doubt myself? Stop doubt. Yeah, don't doubt yourself. Well, actually, doubt yourself and check with your calculator, because if you're overconfident, then you'll get it wrong on test. So it's nice to double check. All right. So see what I did there? Just to make sure that we compare the correct sides. Um, if if you're doing this on your computer screen, don't cut out your computer screen. Okay, just turn your head sideways um, but yeah so if you get that we compare that side with that side that side with that side all right and the last example the polygons find uh, are similar find the missing side length and so what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna take my trusty scissors and I'm gonna do some just manually manual rotating okay uh, so that these two have the same orientation uh, still no still no still no okay it looks like they reflected it also did they reflect it also whoa yes they did reflect it okay so what can I do to show you guys um, okay let's get this light under it can I, can I put this light under it? You guys see that? Okay, so, yeah, that's tricky. Some of you guys could figure it out. Oh, look at that. Okay, so now, oh, there you go. Now it's, it's the right orientation. We got the five, we got the three, we got question mark right there. Okay, so let's write it. This is a five, this is a three, and this is the question mark. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that was this is this is a good one. This is a good problem like that. Okay, and now let's compare the sides. We don't have to compare all of them. Uh, let's just compare the ones that we need to compare. Twenty-five and five is equal to twenty over question mark. Wow, we had to put the light under. Okay, and then let's uh, simplify 25 and 5, which is just 5 over 1 is equal to 20 over question mark. We'll cross multiply here to here. 5 times question mark is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 5. Question mark is equal to 4 units. Yeah, that's it. So... 
We know every side is proportional, so we just take a pair of sides to get that scale factor. Here's that scale factor, five to one. Set it equal to the sides, uh, the corresponding sides, where we have the question mark. And um, yeah, look at that. That was pretty cool. All right, so we get, we, yeah, we came from there. We use that, and then that light, ah! Yeah, so anyways, enough of me just thinking how cool that problem is. Um, but some of you guys could figure it out by just turning your heads, just by looking at it, just by figuring it out. So, all right, that's how you figure out um, if two shapes are similar. Check that all the sides are proportional. And that's how you figure out um, a missing side when you do know that the shapes are similar using their proportions. All right, have a great day.